Nobody else can tell you exactly what your relationship is. It comes down to what you want and what your partner wants out of your relationship and y'all guys align on, on together and what y'all want and what your guys' goals and dreams are for your relationship. And if you guys don't align, then that's up to you to make that determination and what you're looking for. But don't let somebody else tell you how your relationship should be. And don't let somebody tell you like, if, you're, if you feel this in your way, in your heart, then you gotta go off of that. But you don't let somebody else like tell you how your dynamic work, what that what dynamic works for them might not work for you. What's up, world? Welcome to another episode of Nerdy Dating. I'm your host, Ali Zaka. What is Nerdy Dating? It is a relationship advice podcast from a viewpoint of a nerd here in Kansas City. And you have a question, you have friends or family members who have questions that need an opinion from a third person about dating or relationship, please put in the comment section below or you can send me a question on Ali Zaka Nerdy Dating on TikTok and Instagram and I'll answer it on the show for you. And other than that, please like, share, subscribe. Now, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Now, let's go ahead and get into today's topic. This was sent to me. Yeah, I'm going to watch five minutes of this video, and I probably won't watch a little bit more. I'll probably leave it five. It's a 12-minute video, about 13 minutes, actually, 12 minutes and 51 seconds. But it's about a 50-50 man versus a traditional man. And they had this conversation, and I was giving this video to react to it. So... Let's go and get that starting, that reaction started. So I'm going to play the video for you here. Let me get lined up and whatnot and get everything up and going. But I'm going to play this video for you here. And we're going to dive into it. And I'll give you guys my reaction and thoughts on this video. So here we go. And you talking about, oh, I'm not a man if I'm going 50-50 with my woman. Mm. Mm. It's hard, brother. Mm. You sitting up here, your nice house. Your nice jewelry, nice cars. Oh yeah, man. You you gotta you gotta be you gotta do a hundred percent. How? Mm. How, brother? Mm. If I'm making fourteen dollars an hour, what you what you expect? Mm. You know, you still on there, oh yeah, man, a hundred percent, you're not a man. You're not a man. How? I'm still working. Mm. I'm still providing, right? Mm. So what makes me not a man? Because mm. I'm going fifty fifty with my woman. Mm. Mm. And brother, I applaud you. Because I understand that it is hard out here, but we are men, so we have to go hard harder. I'm not saying or trying to speak down to you, my brother, by any means necessary, I'm not. But I want you to re be reminded of something that our fathers didn't teach us, that we must go hard and that we shouldn't get into a relationship with a woman until we have direction. But who are you to say that? A person that cares, a person that loves you, a person that's been in your shoes and understands how it feels when we can't give our family what they truly deserve. We have to go hard. Now, give me one moment. I've been in your shoes. And when I was in your shoes, I stayed in my lane. I lived where I lived. My woman didn't work. She nurtured to the children till I got this. And I'm trying to give you the, the, the cheat code. Do what you need to do so you can feed your woman. And while she's nurturing the children, she can also nurture your dreams and your goals. Now you can be successful. Now you don't have to say, I'm working for $15. Now you can say, I got employees that I'm paying that's working for me for $15. I'm trying to elevate you. But men get so caught up in their emotions and their pride. And the first thing you want to do is feel attacked. Get the wisdom. This is coming from a rich man. But right, right now, this you're coming from a rich man. But right now, you're but this is coming triggered. from a rich man. But how man. do I get here? Yeah. But how do I give you, and I'm giving you the steps. This is, if you put down your ego, if you put down your pride, brother, am I saying anything wrong? I'm saying men should be men. But you're saying we're not men. You're saying we're not brother, men. Brother, any man that makes an excuse can't be a man completely. You can be a male. A man comes with responsibilities and it's hard to be a man. It's hard, brother. It's not easy. That's why the respect you want from your woman that you don't get, I get from mine. You know, my then, woman look, respect me. Hold on, hold my on. My woman respect you me. You think she respects my you. My woman respect me. You think she yeah, respects right, you. Yeah, you right, think brother. she respects Has she ever raised her voice at no, you? No, no. Does she cook for you every night, of brother? Of course. So she respects you cooks for you every night. Does she clean the house? Of course. She cleans the house and you got her working 16 hours a day. Hmm. You, oh, mm, hmm. Hmm. that sounds like slavery. No, it's not. Brother, you got her cooking every I night. I don't have her doing anything. She does it because she wants to. We in the trenches together. The trenches together? That's what we in. Brother, do you know anything about emotional abuse? Explain it. 
Emotional abuse is when you pour all your hurt and pain onto a woman and just because you can't see her scars, you think it's okay. If I had a conversation with your woman, she'll probably start crying. They tired, they not built to go through what they, they're going through with you. She didn't choose you to struggle. But again, who are you to say that? Brother, a brother that loves you. And again, I'm trying to give you the cheat code. If you put yourself in a position, right? You work, if you have to get two jobs, if you have to get two jobs, you grind, allow your woman to do what she does in the home. If you have a business idea, you have her nurture that, hey baby, it's gonna be a little hard for the next two years. But if we move like this, we're going to be good. You keep saying, who am I to tell you this? A man that's been in your position. A man that has risen above your circumstances. And I'm coming back down to say, this is what you do. You're not a man until you move like this. Most males will die, never experience what it feels to be a man and to be complete respected by his women and children because he didn't step into that true king place. Brother, it's hard. I understand. It's difficult. I but understand. do you understand, though? Brother, Do you understand? Brother, if I didn't understand, I wouldn't There's no be way possible you could understand. Oh, crazy. No way. Why do you think that, brother? Look at you. You on the net, flashy. <sighs> yeah, man. Mm -hmm. you, you're not a man if you're not going 100. Your woman don't love you because you're not, you're not paying 100% of your bills. She, she can't. That, who's to say that? Brother, you, you, you will never know what it feels like to truly experience your woman until you're able to remove- Are you with my woman? Brother. Are you with my woman, brother? Brother. Brother, brother are you with my woman? Mom, brother, listen. Exactly. I almost called you a woman. You got, you, you, got your, you got your woman, I got mine, brother. Brother, right now, you're dealing in high emotions. You're not even allowing me to finish my sentence, For brother. For what? You finished your sentence. Bro, when, do you like Chinese food? No. Do you like chicken? No. So you don't like nothing? No. <laughs> Let me, let, let me, let me, let, let's, let me give you a gym, right? Just a gym, brother, please. And may you take this with a divine understanding heart, because I know how sometimes when we get triggered, we can't hear the love in a message because we feel triggered. We feel ashamed. But I'm saying this, if, if you truly love your woman, right? If you truly care for her, all I'm saying is go hard for her and you going hard for her won't last. I know some brothers might be like, I live here, my rent's 1400. I live here, my rent's 2000. I live here, my rent's 5000. I understand. But how would you be living if you didn't have that woman? All I'm saying is if she loves you and you love her, go hard for her. And then you say, baby, look, I'm gonna go hard. You stay home. You nurture the children. You nurture the company. I'm a focus on bringing in this money. So if you're playing your position and she's playing her position, you won't be struggling for too long. And I'm coming from a place of love. But most men have never been loved by a man. What I'm hearing you say is overwork myself until I'm dead. I can't no, no longer enjoy this woman. That's what you're saying. To is me. your family worth that? That's what you're saying. To is me. your family worth going to war for? Of course. So, brother, you taking on another job to provide for your family's every need. But if I continue to work like that, I won't be able to enjoy my family. Man, brother, your, your family wasn't created for your enjoyment. Hmm. They were created for you to, to lead them and guide them to be in a better position than you. This is for your lineage, not just for your personal emotions right now. And sometimes as men, we feel neglected. Sometimes as men, we feel neglected. You're a funny no, guy. No you know why? You, you're a funny guy. Oh, praise Because at the end of the time. day, yes, it's sir. a family. You know, we supposed to be together, laugh, smile, pray together. Oh, praises. Not me overwork myself till I have a heart attack. But who's supposed no. to sacrifice? What do you mean? Who I'm already... sacrifices for the family can strive, brother? I'm already sacrificing. What's that? What do you mean? Eight hours while your woman is sacrificing eight hours, coming home, having sex with you, cleaning, cooking, taking care of the children. I don't make my Come woman on, do anything that she does, brother. What you mean? You don't have to. It's in a woman to make sure that her man and if her she children said she didn't want to cook today, I'm gonna say, okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay, brother. So again, who are you to tell me I'm not a man because I'm not going 100%? What do you consider a man? What do you mean? What is a man to you? A man that gets up, goes to work. Mm -hmm. A woman that gives his woman what he can. Mm -hmm. Provides for his family what he can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop it right there.
So that, I went over the five minutes. I went eight minutes on that, but that there was a lot of stuff to dive like dive into there and break it down. So the guy in the red jump shoot, I don't know who his dude is. Um, he was saying like a man is not a man unless he's going one hundred percent financial wise for his significant other and for his family. The guy in the red shirt and shorts was like. If I go 100, 100% financial-wise, working two jobs, tire myself out, not be at home with the family, I don't get to experience that family life. He, I don't know anything about these two guys. I don't know where they're coming from. But I can see the dude from, with the shorts on. Like If he came from a family where his dad was absent, his dad was always at work, his dad was never at home, his dad finally showed up at the end of the night, but he's already going to bed. He got to school in the morning. His dad is too tired to play with his kids. That's not really bonding with your family. So he's saying like, hey, I want to spend time with my family and my wife does whatever she wants to do and she wants to work as well. She can work. We're working on this together. Now, he didn't say, you know, make it $15 an hour, which is tough. But, you know, it's to say that he's not working hard to get out of that situation. What What do you that guy in the red jumpsuit is trying to pretty much put on him like he's not working hard at all. He's making an assumption of this guy's um masculinity of his manhood by him with the fact that he's not putting 100% into his relationship and there's something I want to say to that when it comes to relationships and the guy in the red shorts made this clear and that is are you dating my wife are you dating my woman my lady if you're not then what is it to you what gives you the right to say who a man is and what a man is not? Because financially is not the only way you can provide for a family. 100%. Financially is not the only way you can provide for a family. There's more than one way to provide for a family. There's more than one way to help a family out. Now, what comes down to relationship, guys, y'all need to remember this, that it doesn't matter what average Joe outside of the house says. It doesn't matter what the person around the corner says. Sometimes it doesn't even matter what your own family says. What matters is how you two work together. If you're decided to dedicate yourself to this person, that person decided to dedicate themselves to you, and you guys decide to you know, join a relationship, and y'all decide to go serious and make a family out of this and go forward, y'all need to ask yourself, what is y'all teamwork? What is y'all boundary? How do y'all relationship work? What works for each person? What works for y'all dynamic? Every relationship is different. Not all relationships are the same, and you can't take somebody else's blueprint and be like, all right, this blueprint here, what they have, that's what exactly we're going to follow, because they're two different people. Your partner is a completely different person. They're their own human being. You're your own human being. So you can't expect your relationship to work the same way as somebody else. Now, you can take advice from somebody else if y'all going through a tough situation regarding like finances or regarding uh, communication. You can take advice and say, okay, communication is the way to work this out. Or we can try to do this work on our finances. Or we can try to do this to work on you know, the kids' situation with schools. You can take advice and you can listen to other people and hear what went wrong from their relationships and what they did wrong that you know what i learned from them not to do that so i'm going to use some of their tips to you know better my relationship and better who i am as a person because you gotta continue growing you gotta keep getting better within your relationship if your partner is like i don't care who brings the bread in then that what works for you guys whatever dynamic works for you you have to look at this and because of who bringing in more money does not does not make your manly. Does not make the one person manly. Like I said before, there's no gender on money. There's no gender on finances. We have to get away from that and say somebody's not a man or a woman because they make more money than a significant other. Now, the dude in the red jumpsuit was saying, yes, you do have to work hard for your family. You have to work hard. But just because you're putting eight hours a day or 16 hours a day doesn't mean you're working hard. You put in 16 hours a day somewhere and you're slacking off, not making anything. All right, I went to work, did eight hours. Did you get better at work? Did you advance at work? Did you put in time to get level up to somewhere? No, you just sit at work playing video games all day on your phone or talking to somebody on the phone or scrolling through TikTok and Snapchat and whatnot on your phone. That's not getting better. You're just sitting there passing the time to getting paid. So for him to say the dude in the red shorts, uh, the red shirt, black shorts guy, or brown shorts guy is not putting in hard work for his family, it's ludicrous. It's, that's, that's a place of assumption. And you don't want to assume what somebody's doing for their family. Now, somebody comes to you for advice, you can give advice 1,000%. But if nobody asks for advice and you're calling them out and saying they're not a man because they don't do this, because you're, you're, what works for your dynamic, what works for your relationship is this. 
and you call somebody out on that, that's that's not healthy at all. And that's actually putting somebody down, belittling them. There's no gender on finances. There's no gender on on money. What comes down to when is a relationship, it comes down to what you and your partner agree on, what you and your what dynamic you and your partner choose, and how your partner, what they prefer and what you prefer. And if y'all align together. If your partner says, you know what, I want somebody who makes X amount of dollars, and you're like, well, I'm not gonna be able to make that go. You can try and make it and go from there. Or you'd be like, hey, you know what? I'm not making this. That's up to your party be like, all right, I'm out. Like this is what I would look for myself. This is what I want, I'm out. The guy in the red jumpsuit probably say they want they want to be a stay-at-home mom. They don't want to work. They want to just make sure they stay at home, watch the kids. And it's up to him to figure out the finances to get everything taken care of, make sure they have a mouth food and the roof over their head. But the guy in the in the red shirt, red t-shirt in the shorts, maybe his Wife or girlfriend was like, you know what? I don't want, I don't want to sit at home all day. I actually want to work. I actually want to put money into this house. I also want to do my own thing. I want to have my own money for my own thing. I don't want to be reliant on somebody else. That's kind of dynamic. That could be the dynamic they have. So to wrap this back up, is that gender does not. It's not on money. Money has no gender. And then two, what makes a man is not based off of finances is based on what you guys do and what you determine is right in your dynamic what you what you think you what you should do for your family that would make a man are you working hard for your family are you gonna spend time with your kids are you doing this for your wife are you doing this for your fiance are you doing all these things or are you just sitting at home all day on the couch not providing there's more than one way to provide than just finances and one last thing before i move on i just want to mention one last time that relationships Nobody else can tell you exactly what your relationship is. It comes down to what you want and what your partner wants out of your relationship and y'all guys align on, on together and what y'all want and what your guys' goals and dreams are for your relationship. And if you guys don't align, then that's up to you to make that determination and what you're looking for. But don't let somebody else tell you how your relationship should be. And don't let somebody tell you, like, if you if you feel this in your way, in your heart, then you got to go off of that. But you don't let somebody else like tell you how your dynamic work, what that di what dynamic works for them, might not work for you. So just keep that in mind. It comes up between you and your partner, what dynamic y'all want y'all relationship to be, and how y'all want your relationship goals to be like. All right, got a few questions here before we hop into some TikTok. So the first question is: Are dating apps ruining dating? And the answer is no. Dating apps are not ruining dating. So dating apps is a tool to help you meet a partner. Now. If you go into dating with this negative connotation that everybody's out on dating apps looking to get casual, looking for hookups, looking for stuff like that, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, that's what dating apps are. It's only for, you know, just purely hookup in this negative culture. Everybody's just looking for the next thing instead of everybody swiping on somebody. It's not really, people are not really finding love on there. But in reality, people are finding love on dating apps. People have gotten married from dating apps. I know people personally who've gotten married off of dating apps. So dating apps aren't ruining dating, not at all. Matter of fact, it's opened up the world of dating and made people pretty much have more options. Now, more options can be a good thing. There are people who believe that more options are a bad thing you're always wondering what's next. But more options means you won't settle for something you're not looking, like you're not happy with. If you're meeting somebody and they're not hitting any of your things, you're not going to settle because you're like, well, I need to hit this certain goal. You're like, no, I, I don't like who this person is. This person doesn't, you know, add value to me. I'm going to move on. And I hope I can find the next person on the dating app that will match that. So dating apps aren't ruining dating. There are tools to use to meet that person. And remember, you're not trying to date the world. You're just looking for that one person that meets best with you. You're looking to date that one person that matches best with you. You're not trying to date the world. And the only way to find that one person, you have to put yourself out there. You have to get on dating apps. You have to go to places and meet them in person. Like you have to put yourself out there. If you're not willing to do that, then dating and you look at dating apps as just your only option and looking at the negative connotation that everybody you talk to is looking just to hook up or everybody you talk to is looking just to be casual or ghost, then you're going to have a bad time on dating apps. So don't look at dating apps as a end all be all. Look at it as a tool to help you with dating. But you have to go in there with a positive mindset when it comes to dating. You have to go in there with the mindset of like, all right, I'm going to look up, meet dates, and get off the apps. I don't want to be on the apps forever. I'm going to meet the person that matches best with me and who I'm attracted to, who I have some kind of connection with, and that we are looking for the same things that we're looking to grow. That's what I'm looking for. I'll put this in my dating app, get out there and start swiping, and then start dating. Dating apps is it's what it is. It's a tool for dating. It's not ruining dating. It just makes everybody easier to find and people to weed out. 
Because let's say there wasn't dating apps nowadays. If you just settle with the person, the first five people in your area, and you're like, well, I'll just settle here, but you're not happy with that person, but you feel like that's something you need to do because you see everybody else doing it, then you're going to find yourself stuck. But dating apps give you the opportunity to meet multiple people and not feel like you're trapped in your area. So dating apps aren't ruining dating. They're a tool to be used and go in with them with a positive mindset. Don't go in there with a negative mindset. You use them with a negative mindset, you're going to have a negative outcome. You use them with a positive mindset, you're going to have a positive outcome. There we go. Next question. I tell men I want to date casually, but no sex, and men still ask for sex or ghost me. Why? So, you're telling men that you were dating casually, but you don't want no sex, but men gonna still ask for sex. The reason why, because casual to most men means there'll be some kind of sex involved. It means friends with benefits and no strings attached. So it's casual. I mean, we can go out there and, you know, hook up and then still do our own thing. We're casually dating. There's no relationship on it. There's no, there's no barriers or boundaries being established. We're casually dating. I mean, I can talk to you. I can talk to her. I can talk to her. I can talk to her. We're just casually dating. We're just seeing we get to know each other and, and move on. But I'm going to keep the options open and I'm going to sit here and, you know, try to hook up with her or maybe have fun with her, whatever the case may be, but still keep my option over cash day. There's no trains attached. So when it comes to telling guys you want to be casual, be prepared. If you say, hey, my casual means no sex, that they're going to be out. Because for them, if you put in sex, there's a boundary for sex. Like, okay, well. If there's sex on this, there's no sex. How long can I talk to this person before we actually get to sex? I have to be in a relationship with this person. I got to be in this with this person. Like, they know sex means something more. So, if I'm just having sex with this person and they're like, hey, let's move to a relationship. You're like, oh, well, I'm too deep in. I'm not going to do this. So, the order be like, you know what? You want casual but no sex. I'm going to be out because that's not what my version of casual is. So, that's your version of casual stick to that but just be prepared that men are going to not commit to you or want to date you because you have sex off the table and you want to be casual because they can go find out with some other girl who is casual and also down to have sex now you're like you know what i just want to date around and see if my father that matches best with me then don't say you're casually dating say you're looking for a relationship you're looking to actually date somebody and see where things go and see what the relationship goes and you don't tell somebody a number you have or how many dates you have or what your limit is before you can have sex with somebody. You don't have to do that. But you just be upfront and honest and say, hey, I'm not looking to casually date. I'm looking to date with intention. And I just want to talk and get to see how things go and see if you're a good match for me. And we are, we're, let's keep it going. If we die, well, I'm going to move elsewhere. So the best way to do this so the man don't think you're just looking to hook up or looking to be casual and still means no sex or means sex, but no sex up front and then casually turn to sex, is say, I'm gonna date with intention. I'm dating with intention, looking to find a future partner. Right then and there, that guy had no one or two things. He could be like, all right, I'm looking for the same thing. Or he'd be like, nah, that's not me. I can't do it, I'm out. And he'll know right there how serious you are. So when it comes to dating, and same with the dating apps, be intentional with what you want. Be intentional. Say, I'm looking for this and I'm dating for this. And that will save you so much time and so much um, like struggles and grief when it comes to people ghosting or leaving. If you're like, well, I'm looking to date with this and that person ghosts you like, okay, they wasn't serious when they wasn't dating for intention with me. That's fine. But I'm looking to date with intention. There you go. And go from there. All right. TikTok time. So let's hop in this first TikTok. This is from... Jen Larson's official. Let's see what she has to say. And her question is, why would you rather be single than in a relationship? This is for men. So here we go. Here's some crazy research for you. So a third of men, 33%, a little over a third of men between the ages of 18 and 29 are not only single, but they're not actively looking for a partner. The same study said that by the year 2030, that 45% of women between the ages of 20 and 45 will be single. So I've got a question for the men because I see it all the time in my comments. Most of my comments are filled with guys saying we're done. We don't, we're not looking. We like our peace. I need some more talk from you guys. Tell me why you're done. Tell me why you don't want to have a partner in life. Tell me why it's more worth it to be single than to have a partner. Even if you weren't to remarry, just to have a partner. I mean, I've talked to a lot of men. 
I've got my answers, but I want to hear it in the comments. So please drop it in the comments. Okay, so why are men completely done with dating? From 21 to 29, she said, that 21 to 29 time frame, for me, I can speak to why there's statistics out there that say, well, you have the adult industry that will say men can get, get off that way without having to go look for a partner. They will say um, video games is something that distract men from going out and doing something. Like, there's a whole, I made a whole video about men being sexless under the age of 30 and this whole thing about men not having sex and stuff like that. But why men are not going out there pursuing women under the age of 30 is because, let's look at it, one, finances. You hear it all the time, especially with, day, with TikTok a lot and Instagram and social media where women say, I don't want to date a man who makes less than you know 70000 who makes less than 60000 or 50000 or 100000 or 200000 You hear women say that. And those men are looking, watching these videos, especially 21, you're 19, 20, 21, you're seeing women say that and you're like, oh, well, if I'm not making enough to even support, you know, myself. Well, I'm going to look, look, look to date a girl who says she wants a guy to make 70000 All right, now I need to focus on my bag. I need to focus on my career to get myself up. So you'll find dudes focusing on themselves and not worry about a woman because he's like, well, I got to make sure I have enough money to date. You'll find guys do that route. you find guys go that route. you also find guys who... They will, let's say, get a bunch of women, and they're like, well, I don't want to settle down because I'm in my 20s. I want to have fun. I want to have a good time, and I don't want to just settle down with anybody just yet. I want to have, enjoy my 20s. So they might go out and date a bunch of women, but not looking to be in a long-term partnership with somebody. So they're just constantly bouncing from woman to woman because they're like, well, no, I'm having fun right now. I'm just going out, having fun, doing this. And I don't want to be in a relationship because it's too much work. It's too much time, too much effort. I put energy into this, which I don't want to do the energy to that. I just want to hook up and move on to the next woman. I don't want to sit there and be like with the same girl for five months in a row or a year or two years or five years and my 20s are gone. So you'll find that out. So let's go right back to it. The one, finances, two, um, the energy, the effort it takes to put into a relationship and build a relationship up. Three is women don't date down. Women date up in ages. They don't date down in ages. So you're 21 to 29. Most of the people in the 21s, unless they date somebody around their age in college, they're not really dating below that. They're, unless they knew somebody out of high school or college, they're not dating. You're not going to find 21 year olds who move away from their city going to date somebody who is. 18 fresh 18 like or or um 19 they're not going to do that they're going to play the dating game on online and swipe on there and see who they can find but most women are not going to put them put their range if let's say a lady is 30 something she's not going to put her range at 21 years old she might put it at 27 or 20 26 and above probably like the 40 something so that's another thing guys we're not getting we're not getting looked at by older women to date we're not. We had to get to a certain age, and then you start finding the dating pool gets bigger. For me, my dating pool didn't get bigger until I turned 27. That's when I noticed I had more women on dating apps I can swipe on. When I was 24, 25, 26, it was like there was a handful, but it wasn't really that many women in their 30s or above me, 27, 28, 29, swiping on me. When I turned 27, 28, more women were swiping on me. I got more swipe, more likes from women who was above me. I was like, oh. Or if I swipe on a lady who was in her 30s, she would swipe on me. I'm like, oh, my age. It was it was a a, a, a barrier to dating, <laughs> not gonna lie. My age was a barrier to dating until I hit that certain age point and then it was like, I can date. There's more options for me to date. So. Those three things right there you can look at, and you can look at the statistics and what statistics would tell you, stuff like that. But as far as men, those are three things. And then another thing, we don't want to be considered creeps. You hear guys say, I don't want to approach a woman because anytime I try to approach a woman, she rejects me or she says I'm a creep, I'm tired. That could be another thing. Guys are probably just tired of approaching and tired of rejection. 
we just get tired of it. That wow, getting rejected so many times until you get to the point where you're like, okay, this is part of the of the of finding somebody that I might have to get rejected. 30 times, 40 times, 50 times, 60 times, whatever the case may be, within the span of four years before I finally meet that person who who likes me, who will match with me, and we can make a connection together. So that can play a part into it. Just walking to a girl and then getting turned down is tough as it is, but then you walk into a girl and she turn around and say, like, oh, he was trying to talk to me. He's a creep. TikTok. I wasn't finding him attractive. I made multiple videos on on this podcast. One where the lady was like, "This dude came and approached me in uh, Home Depot. He wasn't attractive." But another guy hears that, like, "How do you know that's like? How do I know that I'm her type? Why would I go approach her if that if that's the case? I'm not gonna do that. I might as well just get on a dating app and swipe on somebody." So it's tired of rejection, finances, age, and what was the other one I said? Oh, time, time and effort. That's what it comes down to. That's what it comes down to. And then you ask yourself, like, okay, I'm putting myself all through this. Why do I want a partner? And you ask yourself, that, like, well, I can get the same benefits out of just dating around, on, on hooking up with girls on apps. And then my friends add that emotional contact and emotional balance to it. Why do I need to be in a long-term relationship if I can get it elsewhere? You'll hear some guys say that. Like, there's one, there's one episode where a guy was like, from Reddit, he's like, I can get my emotional connect, connection from my friends, and I really don't want to put up with the time with a woman and do all these things to match her things, to match her what she's looking for. I don't want to do all of that. Why do I need a date? And it comes down to why do you want a date? You need to ask yourself, what do you want? Do you want intimacy? You want somebody, a long term partner, a companionship? Then yes, you need to date and meet somebody. But if you don't want a companion, you just want to live your life and move how you want to move through, that's perfectly fine. That's your prerogative. It's up to you. But you have to be honest about that. So when she asks why men are not dating, those are the reasons why. Right there. All right. Next video here. This is from Calorie. Calorie this soul. I feel like I didn't say her name right. But let's see what she said. She said, hey, asking my fiance if I'm his dream girl. Here we go. So I asked my fiance something the other day and his response was quite interesting. And it made me wonder how do other people feel about this? So I asked him, um, do you, who's your dream girl? And he said he doesn't have one, which kind of hurt my feelings because I was like, oh, do you think so? I'm not your dream girl. And then he said, well, I'm already with you. So I'm not dreaming about you, you know, like I already have you. And I was like, well, you're my dream man. Like, you know, I don't dream of anyone else. You're my one and only forever. So you're automatically everything. You're my well, dream why man. why are you dreaming? Okay, so my question Dreaming. is, like, there's no right or wrong question. I mean, right or wrong answer. It's just like, how do you think? Do you think, like, the way he thinks makes sense? Like, it's like, you don't have a dream girl if... Because I'm not dreaming of no girl. Like, you yeah, know, but you... But exactly. I feel like you're trying to trick me up with this question. <laughs> trying to, man, don't fall for it. If your girl asks this to you... Don't no, but it. the, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real question. Like, Baby, you're my dream, my one and only. Is that what you want to hear? Yeah. You've been my baby. Do you get it? Yeah, but it's like, you're you're speaking so British right now. <laughs> it's like... I'm just saying, listen. <laughs> listen, I don't dream of no girl. So my initial answer was, I don't have a dream girl. Because what am, I, what am I dreaming about? A dreaming about having a dream person is like, oh, they need to have this, 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 this. No, you're my soulmate. Do you get it? It surpasses all of that rubbish. It makes sense. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. So I Do you men have a dream girl? I'm pausing right now because I'm thinking back to myself. When I was younger, I did have a dream vision of what I thought my dream woman was going to be. Um, when I'm younger, I mean like high school. Like I thought she was going to be this and she'd be into this and she'd be into that and we're going to do this. We're going to do this together and play video games. We're going to, you know, watch anime and do all these certain stuff and draw together. And I don't know. I didn't know we're like, we're going to have a house, a big house and stuff like that. And all, all these things that, you know, what you think that like as a kid, you think is important. Like, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to have, you know, a wrestling ring and all this stuff like all the goofy things that like you think of because you like that but then you get older and you realize that like 
the dream girl I had envisioned when I was um, 1920 is not what I'm looking for at the age of 30. And, and it's not going to be the what I might be looking for at the age of 40 and so forth and so on. So your dream girl, it's, it's going to change. It's always going to change because... When you're in a place, you need somebody you need stability. You need somebody who's gonna be with you, who want to make sure that you're honest, make sure you're not just you know going around being goofy and being stupid with certain decisions. Kind of make sure that like he has a partner to talk to, a teammate. Like what I look for now, it was different from what I looked for back then. Like back then, I looked for somebody who they had to be in. Like that wasn't a that wasn't a a um. It wasn't, was it not a, a perf it was a preference. It was a standard. They had to be in anime. They had to be into like CrossFit or Ninja Warrior. They had to be into, um, what else was it? it was something else that was like maybe video games or something like that. Or, more, oh, action. They had to be into movies. They had to be into action movies. Like, cause I love Marvel. I love superheroes. So they had to be into that. And the older I got, it was like, no. Why do you like, why do you, and me had to break it down and ask myself why do I want those things? Why do I want my partner to be, you know, into anime, into Marvel movies, or into superheroes? Well, because one, I'm into that, that's the way I like to spend time with my partner. I want to spend time with them by watching anime or watching uh, movies and whatnot. Or, into Ninja Warrior and CrossFit was because I want somebody who's health thinking, who's thinking about health and thinking about fitness and thinking about living long, long term. If my partner wasn't thinking about like being to fit, being to fitness and being to like health and being health conscious, like what's going to look like when, you know, 30 years down the line, they're not healthy. They're in the hospital, baby, because they didn't keep, keep care of themselves. So those are things like the reason why i was thinking those things because those were the underlying meaning behind those things was so once you understand what the underlying meaning is that oh you want somebody to spend time with you can spend time with somebody via cooking you can spend time via somebody go watch a tv show but that doesn't really like a tv show just spend just be existing with somebody it doesn't have to be a marvel movie it doesn't have to be an anime you can spend time with somebody that way as long as you still get to be yourself and still get to do your thing what's the issue if they're into health and fitness they're doing it like they're making going to the gym or being health conscious, what's the issue that they're not into Ninja Warrior or CrossFit? So, and oh, football was another one because I love spending time with football. And actually, that's a pretty big one for me still to this day. Um, but it's more of like, don't put my stuff down at this point. I want a girl who doesn't put me down. That's what I look for. It's that dream girl. Like, it, it's going to always change. So there's not a set dream girl. And for you as your significant other, am I your dream girl? He's like, I'm not dreaming. I think his answer is better. Like, I'm not dreaming. I have you. Why do I need why do I need a dream girl? And she's like, Well, you're my dream man. So that means he was everything that you checked off on the box. When in reality, what you two are into now, five years from later, what your idea of the dream person is might shift. It might not be the same. So I don't think there is a, a dream person when it comes to dating. You can have your preference, you can have your standards, but you're not gonna meet your dream person. There's no, and there's no need to put that, put that um, energy and force your partner to try to hit that certain goal of yours, a certain perception you have of what they should be because they're human. Now you guys continue working together. You guys continue um, dating and communicating and work to your goals and dreams and live life together. And y'all appreciate each other and respect and love each other. That right there is the dream you need. You don't need a dream where they, well, they have to be into fashion they have to be into cooking they have to be into you know going out on country nights and doing this they have to be able to talk business and finance with me they have to hit these things your significant other don't have to hit those just ask yourself what are you looking for in your relationship with your partner and ask yourself do they add that energy and provide that love caring happiness to you and you, you gotta work together and connect together and communicate well if y'all don't communicate well and one person needs not being met or one person can't meet the other person's needs then you need to look at and evaluate your relationship but if you guys are hitting each other's needs you guys are matching and communicating and talking and pretty much existing for a for each other and existing for a common goal then what's the issue there's your dream right there you got your dream so if you want to look at it that way you got your dream but the dream girl question that's always going to change let's uh, one dude 
put it this way, young Ali's dream girl is different from current Ali's dream girl, and f future dream girl could be different. So I think that question of men like having a dream girl, it's it's like, no, you're set, you're setting yourself up. You can ask that question, but just be prepared. You might not get an answer you want to hear. Just be honest with that. All right, next video here, and this is from Kelsey Dreadnought. Got Dreadnought? Dread? Got a new? Got a new? I'm sorry, I messed your name up. I'm so sorry with names. I'm bad with names, but this is another Kelsey. I feel like it's our first Kelsey. I feel like there's another Kelsey, but anyway, here we go. If you have the tiniest hint right now that a man is not like utterly, completely fucking obsessed and in love with you and that you are just kind of here as a placeholder because men love comfort and they love ease. If you have the tiniest hint that you are not the one for him, you need to walk away right now. Men do not love the same as women. They love, but they don't love the same. And if you are not the one, if you are not the one that he is going to put everything on the line for, if you are not that girl, then you are a placeholder. And he will drop you like this when he finds the girl that is it. And the girl that's it doesn't have to be the prettiest. She doesn't have to be the best in bed. She doesn't have to be anything. She's just the one that sparks something inside of him. She's the one that makes him feel something different. If you are not this girl, if you are not his dream girl, and I have a video about this, if you are not your man's dream girl, you ain't it and you are wasting your time. You could be taking all of that energy that you are pouring into a man that is mediocre, lukewarm about you, and you could take all of that energy and pour it into yourself, your money, your business, your goals, your body, you name it. You are wasting your time. You are wasting your energy. You do not have time for that. And what this is stemming from is low self-worth. This is what it is. So if you are a placeholder, walk away right now. You are better off alone focused on yourself, focused on your future, and focused on your goals than wasting your time and energy and anything else with a man who you are in it for him. Follow for more. Okay, that was loaded. That was loaded. If so she time. also talks about the dream girl as well. And like I said before, that dream girl, it can be different for what he wants now to what he wants in the future. So don't sit there and be like, well, I'm not his dream girl. You're not his dream girl, but yet next year his dream girl could be something different. So don't ask yourself that. What you need to look at if you're looking at thinking that you're a placeholder, she's like, you have the, the the tiniest bit of doubt in your relationship. You need to get out. No, then you ask yourself that's the insecurity of your your that you're dealing with, or what is this tiny place of doubt coming from? Is it coming from your past experiences? And like, oh, you saw your partner do this right here. Well, my previous partners, they all did this, and that's why I'm feeling this way. You have to ask yourself that. And one way to see if your significant other, the guy you're talking to, is into you and that you want to be with you, is watch his action and communicate with him. Tell him that, hey, I'm feeling a little insecure right now. This is what's going on. I want to have an open, honest conversation about, about things. This does not make you feel one way or another. I just want to talk you know, talk this out. I feel like I should be able to come to my significant other to have this conversation with. Like, tell him you're thinking, like, okay, so what's going on here when when you do this? This is how I feel. But I don't even say when you do this. I would say more like I feel this way when you're not around when you go out and do things and i don't feel invited i don't i'm not invited i feel you know i feel kind of left out i would be included even you just ask me a question hey would you like to come like that right there i i'll feel much appreciative if you just ask me or what your love language is if you tell your partner your love language and they're not hitting your love language to make you feel appreciative make you feel respected and love then you have to look at that and say okay we know our love languages we talked about the love language we ex explain our love language and this is how i need to feel love it's okay to ask your partner hey i need this to feel love i want this to feel i not want i need i need this to feel love you know i appreciate it i love you so much if you would do this there you go right there let your partner know like i not when you do this when I not when you like go off and do this when you do that. I don't feel this way. Don't tell your partner I don't feel this when you do this. So I'll take that back what I said a moment ago because that's a really tough way to explain explain that. But let's say your partner goes out all the time. Let's say your partner likes to go to out with the friends. You can say I feel appreciative if I if you can ask me if I like to go. Like I might not always say yes, but just the invite would make it a lot better. Like 
ask your partner that. Ask your, let your partner know, like, okay, hey, I'm having doubts right now, but this is why, and I don't like. And ask your partner, watch your partner's actions. That's what it comes down to. I don't know if you want to say your partner you have doubts because then y'all make you guys think about your relationship, which is probably something you need to talk about. They talk about like, oh, cause maybe your partner didn't know what they was doing was a hurting you the wrong way, or they didn't know what they was doing. They thought it was everything is fine, and in reality, you're like, no, I'm actually having doubts. You know, and before you get to the point where like you're just out the relationship, let your partner know, like, hey, you know, I'm not feeling, you know, loved. I'm not feeling. Appreciative, but it'll make me feel loved and appreciative if you would do this. Now, I always come from a place of you, not a place of what they're doing. Like, don't say what they're doing is wrong. Say, like, I will feel appreciative if you would do this for me. If you would love, and they care enough to make sure, like, okay, your love meter is hit. They, they're going to adjust to what they're doing. They're not going to be selfish in how they react to things and what they go about things. So it's about having open communication and talking about what you want and what you need out of a relationship and also ask your partner what they want, what they need. If your partner is doing things for you, are you doing the same things for them? Are you giving them that energy as well? Because relationship is both ways. It goes both ways. It's not a one-way street. One person just can't give, you know, 110% and the other person is giving in zero. It's not going to work that way. Now, there will be ebbs and flows in your relationship. There will be times where you guys are going through things and moving through life where, you might not be able to give 70% into your partner, but also let your partner know, hey, I'm going to be doing this during this time. I'm going to be doing this during this time. Just give me a heads up. I'm going back to school. I'm giving you a heads up. I'm moving to a new city for work. I still love you. I want to keep this to work, but this is what we have to do. And we got to make, you know, have a game plan and communicate about that. It's come down to communication. But you feel like your partners have a hint of doubt and you're running out. Don't do that. Let your partner know how you're feeling. Have a conversation with them. You guys decided to be in a relationship for a reason. Have that conversation and go from there. Don't just be like, oh, well, I feel like they're not, for, they're not in it for me, so I'm heading out. No, your partner's treating you how you want to be treated. And they might not be able to spend much time with you because they're working so much or they're doing this. Talk to them, have that conversation, and see where you guys are coming from. Have that conversation. Don't just be like, I'm out because... I just had the slightest doubt. Now, your partner's not treating you right. Your partner's not treating you well. And you'd say, hey, you know, I feel appreciative if you do this. And your partner still doesn't continue to, to try to better improve your relationship, make sure your love meter is hit. Then it might be time to be like, all right, I'm in a relationship. But don't be sitting there like, I'm not your dream girl. You just eat yourself up. And the low self-esteem thing, pretty much your low self-esteem relationship, if you're getting treated wrong, then you like stick keeping up with that but if you're with somebody who's treating you right and you're getting taken care of i wouldn't call it low self-esteem but watch your partner's action and communicate of what it comes down to all right reddit time this first one's gonna be it's gonna be a bit much but bear with me i hate going down on my boyfriend okay I know this sounds pretty gory, but it's ready. So I'm hoping to get some advice on what to do with the situation. Okay, so I've always been a pretty sexual person. I enjoy pretty much everything else, but I never like going down. I try to like it or like even tolerate it, but I generally can't. I recently got a boyfriend and this is my first relationship ever. I'm 20 years old. So the whole giving head thing hasn't really been an issue because he doesn't like expect me to do it obviously but he has said that he really enjoys it and in some way prefers it prefers it that i do that why do you she put it like that prefers it because you love it prefers it I've mentioned to him that I really don't like doing it and that I honestly cannot stand doing it because it grosses me out so much. I don't understand why I hate it so much. I talked to some of my friends who have boyfriends slash hook up with other people and none of them seem to have any kind of problem with it. Some of them even say they enjoy doing it, which blew my mind. I don't know. I guess I just don't want to make him feel bad or like turned off for me because I don't enjoy it. Or maybe I can find a way to get or get over it. I don't know. I just want to make him happy and keep him interested sexually, but I'm afraid I won't if I don't get over this. Anything, please help. You. That's just not something. That's that is a boundary for you when it comes to 
comes to sex that you're just not willing to perform that is completely fine and okay you have to be comfortable with that and let your partner know let your boyfriend know like hey i just do not like doing that and he's okay with that he's gonna be like that's completely fine you don't have to like he's not gonna force you to do that at all and if he's mature because y'all say he's 20 years old too he's mature enough he's gonna be like okay cool i you know what I don't want to put you in a situation you feel like you're bad in. I'm not going to do that. Now, what's going to come down to if you guys continue to progress, and that's something he genuinely, like, really enjoy, you might find yourself at odds a bunch of times. And you have to ask yourself if that's something, a sexual compatibility you guys can match on. If you guys can't match on that, then it's time for y'all to, you know, step away. But I will let it be up to him to do the breakup because it's his preference. He wants that. And if you can't provide that, it's up to him to be like, you know what? I can't put this aside. I can't sacrifice it like I thought I could. I'm going to end this. Or he'll be like, you know what? I really don't really need that part of sexual foreplay to be completed. I'm fine. You know what? Would be cool. So to me, let your boyfriend know. I'm sorry. I love you, but I really, or I really appreciate you, or I like you so much. But I just, I just hate that act so much. It makes me. I think it's gross, and I, I can't do it. And just. Tell him that and, and let him like be either he's be okay with that or he's gonna make the choice to leave. That's up to him though, not you. Like if you want to be in a relationship, you can be in a relationship, but just understand that you guys gonna hit some rough patches when it comes to sexual conversation and sexual compatibility because it's one thing that you don't want to do. And if he's okay with that, he's not gonna be bothered with it. But if he's that's something he prefers so much that it's something he has to have happen for. You know, for his sexual love meter to be here, his sex not even love me, but his sexual meter to be hit, then he will have to end the relationship. But I would say it's up to him to do it. I wouldn't like unless you don't want to continue the relationship, you can end it. But if you want to continue the relationship, just understand that like it will be some time where you guys might argue over this and might get out of hand, and you guys feel like it's something that you guys can't get over. Then it's time to end it. You guys sexually you're sexually compatible without the same same thing. Y'all don't want the same thing in the relationship. So or as far as sex goes, so that's up to him. If he decides to stick around, you know, you're not going to be able to do that. That's not something you're going to do for him. That's up to him to stick around. So as far as help, I wouldn't be afraid of losing him because you'll, you'll meet a guy who don't want you to do that. Like, you'll find a guy who'll be like, I don't want, you know, I don't want blowjobs. It's just not something I'm into. You'll find a dude who'll say that. But to keep him interested sexually, do other things that would make him, like, that he likes have done what positions he like what things they will also you know he enjoys do those things as well to make him stay you know interested sexually maybe he comes to dressing up or doing uh role play in bed those things work too not just one aspect which is um foreplay so ask what else he likes in bed ask him that and see where he goes from there as far as making him happy sex is not going to be the only thing to make him happy like there's other things you can do to make a guy happy like add peace to him um be a friend be a good friend like it doesn't have to be just sex sex is not the only thing there's other things you can do to make a guy happy and for a guy to be like i truly genuinely love your presence and love being with you all right this is a long one but let's buckle up for this one my girlfriend thinks i cheated because i watch adult content my girlfriend, 26, female, and I'm 25, male, have been together for a year. Since the start of everything, it's been amazing with her. We want to spend our life together and build a family. We have the same values in life. Fast forward to a couple of weeks ago, I had watched adult content a couple of times when she wasn't around, and I was feeling the urge. I'm not one to cheat on my partner and never would, so I just relieved myself. My girlfriend ended up finding out that I watched it about a month later after I already did it. It didn't, I didn't clear my search history and there wasn't much to begin with. Either three videos were watched within a couple of weeks prior or period. When she found out, she asked me about it and I told her, yes, I watched it. She was furious and felt like I cheated on her due to getting myself off to another woman. I reassured her that I could go let go adult content and not watch it going forward if it made her feel that uncomfortable she ended up wanting a break or wanted to break off the relationship for me to move out but we eventually talked it through together and continued our life together he put in parentheses i really don't mind watching it uh, i really don't i really do not mind watching it uh when i 
sorry, I really don't mind not watching it. When I did it, it was just something to ease the urge hours before she came home. Just wanted some, some me time. That's what he said in parentheses. But anyway, they're about to break up. She got to kick them out. They decided to stay together. There have been a couple of times when we talked about this topic and she gotten really angry about it because I know it still bothers her, but we said we'll still work towards our future together. After that thing, we're amazing. I would show my love to her more and let her know the future that I see with her. She would also tell me about the life she wanted together as well. The kids, the home we wanted our dreams together basically we went out with some friends one night and came home to watch a show together and we end up having um sex due to teasing each other all day okay good job i could tell she was craving it and so was i after we finished she ended up getting tired and going to bed i followed her soon after about five to ten minutes checking the phone beams and locking up the house in general brushing teeth etc so okay dude we get it you're, you're doing nightly duties okay when i got to bed she asked me when where i've been i told her i told her mind you she's been asleep since she came to bed so she doesn't know how long she's been asleep for. I told her it was only five, 10 minutes. We ended up cuddling and she started, we started to have sex again. After it was finished, she asked me what we had. She asked me what had me so turned on again. She thought she already relieved me. Okay, that's not how it works. I told her she, I told her she did, but she turned me she turns me and just wanted it again. She turns me. Oh, what? Your writing's off, bro. She turns me, but she turns me and just wanted it again. She seemed bothered by that and didn't really seem to believe me. She thought I might have seen something online that turned me on again, but I really didn't. I reassured her by showing her that what I was looking at for the last five, 10 minutes. So it kind of upset me that she thought that. I understood where she was coming from, but I was just trying to show her my love. After trying to calm her down and put her back to bed, she ended up saying she was tired. She tried to get over what happened, but it's constantly eats at her and that she feels like she doesn't know me anymore. Also that we need a break and she doesn't want to do this relationship anymore. She left the house and is staying at her parents it's been three days since that happened. I've been blocked on everything and don't have a way to contact her. I'm giving space, but I just want my best friend home. Any advice as to how I can go about this? Whew. All right, bro. bro that was a lot. big paragraph for like the fact that you guys, um, that you decided to watch adult content and then your girlfriend saw that and got mad at you. Pretty much just that you watch adult content, your girlfriend feel violated, feel like she was cheated on, and you told her that, you know what, I'm sorry, I won't do it again, but she can't get over it. That was a boundary in her relationship. And she blocked you right now. Now she left and blocked you on everything. You can't contact her, and you, she's been gone for three days. Your, your relationship's over, man, to be honest. Your relationship's over. I hate to say it. Like, it is done. Um... This for her adult content is huge. It is like a big, big deal for her. And as it seems, yeah, I know y'all been together for a year, but she's out the relationship at this point. She can't get past it. And she says she don't want to do this anymore. It's time for you to move on. It hurts. It really does hurt. I know you guys want to build a future together. I know you keep telling us that you want to build this future with her. She tells you this, but that's because she's telling you that she actually wants to build that same future with you. And she's done. So, it's time for you to start thinking, like, thinking, all right, this relationship's over. What's my next steps? How am I going to move on in life? That's what you need to start thinking of right now. She's out this relationship. So, you need to start thinking what I need to do to move on. And what's my next step? What's my next goals? And go from there. For your upcoming relationship that you will come in contact with, ask that person on dates how they feel about, you know, adult content. I wouldn't ask date one. When that's day two, maybe day three, day four, if you're finally getting really serious, how do you feel about dope content? Ask about that. What do they think of it? See what they're feeling like of it. And when ask them what they what they consider cheating. Do they consider dope content cheating? That way you know where that boundary is in the relationship. And that way you know, okay, you know what? This is where we're at. This is how we feel. 
I'm not gonna cross that boundary. This right here, your previous relationship with your girlfriend, who now you're it's about to be your ex, the way this is leading up, y'all didn't establish that boundary. Y'all didn't have that conversation, that communication, and she's not communicating with you either. She's literally blocked you on everything. You just have to wait until she decides to open up. But at this point, I would be, I wouldn't be waiting around. She goes a week or two without talking to you. I wouldn't be waiting. I'd be like, I haven't spoke to you for two weeks. I try to get a hold of you. I think we're done. I don't like the way this makes me feel. I don't like the way this has me feeling. I think that we're done. And y'all can go, you know, be separate for six months to a year. Go learn about each other. Y'all decide to come back around. Y'all can come back around, but then you know where you guys' boundaries at. Ask you guys about boundaries. Talk about boundaries. Talk about communication and how you guys want to proceed forward. But at this point at right now, you're not going to be able to get her back, man. I'm sorry to say. You just have to prepare for, you know, the next step, which is the breakup and understanding that the next person you talk to, talk about adult content and how they feel about it and see what the communication is around that. Next question. When's the soonest you will have sex with someone after meeting? Assuming you're trying to establish a relationship, mostly for the ladies, but men, pl please feel welcome to answer. I have this person I just met, been on two dates, and they seem frustrated that we're only at the rubbing and kissing phase. We have connected pretty well, but what do you think? What's your normal? No, I'm not about to do jack with anybody and do jack anything that I want to do. Just taking a poll to see where I'm falling on the spectrum here because it seems all my dates want to move this fast. Palm to head, thanks. How soon? Yeah, hmm. How soon? For a guy, it can be date one, night one. It, it it doesn't really have to be. There's not like a time frame of it. Like date one, we we really have sex. Like we are ready to have sex date one. It's I know there's not there's not really like a a thought process for for the guy. So it comes down to what the lady wants. Like if she wants to, you know hook up that night we can hook up she doesn't want to hook up well then we're not gonna hook up now you don't want to be with a guy who's being pushy and pressuring you to do it like oh i'm getting blue balls because we didn't hook up on night two like no don't and don't and somebody complain about it, like they should not complain about having sex they should be like hey i'm ready when you are I'm ready when you're comfortable we'll move from here when you're ready i just let you know i'm ready to go but if you're ready i'm down to be ready for you don't sit there and be like oh I can't get off because you know you're getting me wild up like no no man is gonna do that you might you know talk to a, a a young man like a young boy who i mean like young boy i mean 21 22 23 24 like he might do that because he doesn't understand what's actually happening by pressuring a lady to do that so an older more mature man i was saying that not a young man but a young boy but a mature man so since a young young boy young man 21 22 but a mature man he would be more mindful and be like, no, you take your time. I don't want to put you in a situation where you feel pressure. I want to be put in a situation where it can turn badly. Take your time and we'll have sex when you want to have sex. But let you know that as for me, I'm ready to go at any time. But for you, I will let you know when you're ready. When you're ready. All right, last one. Why would you unmatch with them? Hi, men of Reddit. For those who use online dating apps, any of you ever set up a first date with someone and suddenly really eager and then unexpectedly decide to unmatch them the, day, the next day? If so, why? I'm 25 female, matched with a 37 male yesterday, and we had a great conversation about where we live, favorite foods, and wanting kids. He seemed to be looking to settle down since he had not sure. Wait, what? He seemed to be looking to settle down since he had not sure about kids on his profile. And he said he really wants kids, but felt he was getting old. But men don't have a clock. So, okay. Anyway, asked to go on a dinner date this Friday night and then ended up ended the night with have a good night, beautiful slash handsome. Then this morning, I checked the app and we were still matched now our conversation is gone we, we are still matched but our conversation was gone okay i know i shouldn't think too much into that but i'm seriously genuinely curious as to why anyone would do that after showing interest and effort in asking you on a date just didn't expect a guy his age to behave like that 
we were still matched, but now I, oh, wait, the, the, then this morning I checked the app and we were still matched. Now our conversation is gone. This morning she checked the app and we were still matched, but now our conversation was gone. Okay, so he's what, 37 male? What right there sounded like when he was in the beginning, beginning of this, it sounded like he was like, I hate to use the word love bombing, but he was love bombing. He was doing all this stuff to say like, hey, let's have kids, we might have kids one day, or no, when you're looking married, like he's saying like, all these things to get you excited and get, paint this picture in your mind of what's going to happen next. And then when that date, the day came for the date, he was like, I'm not really about that life. I'm not in it like this. I was doing all this to get that dopamine rush because it feels good to have a conversation of past times so you don't feel lonely. And dating apps helped fill that void for a little bit, but when it came time to put pedal to the metal, he didn't want to do that. He didn't want to go on an actual date. And that's why he unmatched you. He could be at her, he's on a dating app because he looking to fill some time. He's on a dating app and he's looking to meet somebody. He actually met somebody, but another reason why he unmatched you. Three, he's looking for that dopamine rush that he get from himself and set up a date and then like, you know what, I'm out. Four, he could have deleted his app altogether and just got off the dating apps altogether. So that's one reason why you were triple as unmatched with somebody because you just, because that they ended the dating app or they deleted the app, whatever the case would be, and got rid of their profile. That'd be a reason why they unmatch. But those four things why I said, so he deleted the dating app. Two, he was met somebody else and he was talking to. Three, he's doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing. Or four, he just needed that dopamine rush. And he ended it from there. All right, guys, that's it for this episode of Nerdy Dating. Please like, share, subscribe, and please tell me what you guys think of this episode. If you love it, please put it in the comments below. I think I'm going to cut out a lot of those longer questions because there's typos in there and these dudes, these people wasn't writing right. So I was like, there's some missing comments and whatnot. So I'm going to keep, keep them short, but that big one was definitely something to, to talk about because his girlfriend just left him. But other than that, like, I'm going to keep them, keep them shorter for future episodes. Other than that, thank you guys for watching this episode of Nerdy Dating. Please, you can guys find this episode on, Pod, on Spotify as well. And then y'all want to send me a uh, question, you can put in the conversation below, or you can send it to me on Ali Zaki Nerdy Dating on TikTok and Instagram. Other than that, thank you guys so much, and keep being awesome. Thank you for watching this episode of Nerdy Dating. I really appreciate it. If there is another episode you want to watch, you can look at it right there. If you want to subscribe to the page and watch more content, it's down here. Also, you have a question about dating, you want to put it in the comment section, go ahead and do it. Or you can send me a dating question to my email alizakanerdydating at gmail.com. That's alizakanerdydating at gmail.com. And I will answer your question on the next episode of Nerdy Dating. Thank you so much for watching the show. I appreciate you and keep being awesome.